what we say, it's right there in the papers. Right? So that's part of what we're hoping to San Luis Obispo students will help bridge the gap yes. or, or, or articulate it into plain rules. Well, yes. Because yes. students, they may have a connection to the bikes. Yeah. yeah. So please, uh, this yeah. is not just I, no, no. This I is not just horses. It's not just okay. it's like the more I, I would do this like the more different modes of transportation that people have and are at present, the more likely those concerns are able to surface and then articulated in a way that hopefully can be communicated to the county that they can understand the process. The emergence of um, how do we do? You said the students have to. Communicate with them prior to, or what do you, how do you want to handle this? Uh, I need to get from Professor Angus now because I'm, okay. I'm trying to <coughs> accommodate his objectives for his students while at the same time recognizing the reality of communications in our community. Okay, because I've started calling and notifying some of the the question people that I know. Well, the most important thing is that they just show up. Yeah, and then if, if they don't hear from Cal Poly, that's that's fine. I'll do what okay. I can. Yeah, I'll just know if, if they're willing to share their email address, then I can push it on to. Okay. So okay, if they're me, not, then that's fine as long as they're here. That's the most important thing. So okay. Let me make sense. Work on that. Cool. So we're very excited. Anything else we need to add to that? Or we... No. Cool. Are we doing anything special with them on Friday the 11th? Yeah, there is a. They hit his email. He says. You want to see as much of as possible between 1 and 6 p.m. Oh. On the Friday afternoon. On Friday afternoon? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're not, I don't know that yet, and I need to send some emails. Are they driving in their car? Are they driving in our car? Does he talk about that? He said, I uh, had the student try to make a list of sites to see if you're welcome to tell us exactly where to go and what to see. I do that. <laughs> I assume I want us to go with you. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that's what that sounds like to me. Well, I just, I'm sorry, I just because yeah. this one. I have so, so, obviously, well, oh, actually, but see, Oh, okay, this is up there. Uh, they're meeting the parking lot up there at the San Luis Obispo. They're leaving Act 83. They expect to be at Supi Cafe. As you know, we filed a complaint against, the, uh, against Edison with the CPC for uh, developing a helicopter pad. Helipad, I mean, that's not the right term, but it's what I'm going to use. Um, and flying. Sorties. <laughs> well, okay, not sorties. I'm flying a whatever kind of sorties. Uh, bear Trap Canyon for several weeks in October. The uh, the uh, judge that was assigned the, 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 there was a, a a judge that was assigned. His name is Garrett Toy, and there was also a, a PUC commissioner assigned. Um, several, I don't know if you guys know this, I just learned this last week, a lot of the, several uh, PUC commissioners are gone. President Batcher's gone, all, all, it's like a huge turnover, Turnover, yes, and uh, Guzman Aceves is gone, I really liked her. Um, so the whole new batch are in, and one of the, the, the commissioners signed up our complaint is one of the new ones, so I don't know anything about them. But, uh, um, so, um, the judge, Edison filed a motion to dismiss our complaint. And in that motion to dismiss, they made a number of allegations. The biggest of which is that the Public Utilities Commission does not exercise jurisdiction over Edison's distribution facilities pursuant to General Order 131. Now, that was a huge statement because basically it says, we don't have to comply with General Order 131 because the utilities, the Public Utilities Commission doesn't enforce 131 on distribution facilities. And our whole complaint was based on the compliance requirements imposed by General Order 131. So you know that that's going to blow like lead balloons. And I got that almost 90% of the lines that Edison owns are distribution lines. So it's basically telling, proclaiming to the PUC, you don't really regulate most of our facilities. I, and it's been my experience when you tell the PUC that they don't, they, don't. <laughs> they don't regulate your stuff and your utility. You can make that. Well, guess what's yeah. going to happen in a year? <laughs> Sorry? Guess what's going to happen in a year? So yeah. it's getting regulated. Yeah, no. well, uh, we, in our reply to their motion to dismiss, we went through in detail all of the places in general order 131 where distribution facilities are included, are, are addressed. 
including that there was a lengthy decision that was issued in 1994 when Deborah Lord Wendy was actually adopted. And it says explicitly, very clearly in there, that utilities are uh, they're, they're expected to coordinate and collaborate with local agencies and comply with local permitting requirements. They are mandated to get all ministerial permits, but they're also directed to comply with um, zoning requirements to the greatest extent feasible. Um, and so, and that's something we've been saying for a long time. The county, the county, Edison is required to coordinate with the county and comply with the permits, including things like yellow pad permitting requirements, which is not ministerial, it's discretionary. The, the only thing that the county cannot do is require Edison to obtain a CDP. But the PUC has directed Edison to basically comply with what would be imposed, not basically, to absolutely comply with the conditions that would be imposed if they were to go through the permit process. And that was a very clear decision, the decision that was issued in 1994. So that was the basis of our um, response, our, our response to their motion. And then we had, so the pre-hearing conference was scheduled for last Thursday. Um, and before that, we had a meet and confer session with Edison that I think several of us participated in. Um, and uh, uh, we identified the, the items that we want to address in the, within the scope of this proceeding. And some of the things Edison objected to, especially the reasonableness parts. Um, one of the things they introduced in their response that we wanted to then talk about. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's very funny. You know, there's something in this decision, 94, it's 94.06.014. It says very clearly that the, the commission complaint proceeding is the proper venue for these issues. And it says, which is, this is mind blowing, it says even if the actions initiated by a utility comply with all applicable provisions of general orders and statutory, um, affected stakeholders uh, can and should still complete the, the uh, use the complaint process to address conduct by a utility that is otherwise unreasonable, even if it complies fully with all regulations. That's a very powerful thing. And so on that basis, we argued, uh, and we, I, we pointed out to her during the, the meet and confer, the Edison attorneys, that not only are we saying you need to comply with GO131, you can say you don't have to, but we have this backstop argument that says even if you don't have to comply with the 131, or you did comply with 131. What you do we are going to ask the PUC to determine the reasonableness of your conduct, because it was entirely unreasonable. Well, I mean, I, the thing that is particularly irritating is when they said they talked to the county, but they basically told the county, hey, we don't need to do anything, just let me know. That's for example. <laughs> yeah, so, so there was not a confer, it was a, hey, we're going to go do this. Uh, that, that was the, the yeah. And I, 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 I did yeah. ask for that. Yeah, but yes, yeah, yes, because they, they, they contributed that they conferred with the county. But when we talked to the county, the county said, oh no, they just told us they didn't need to do anything. Yeah, we like, got, oh, yeah, that's we, conferring. Yeah, <laughs> and okay. the, power, the power of the discovery process is, well, we did a public records act request on regional planning. They were great. They had sent us the, the, and there was a great discussion and confusion. Are they exempt? And then, then but what they really were told was that the Public Utilities Commission had approved the helicopter and the helicopter operation, which is just not true. <coughs> and so that was the conception, the idea, the notion that the regional plan was working under. So, and that's true. Once the PUC approves something, then you know there, there's a lot more hands off from the county. But the PUC didn't approve it. So there's a lot of uh, impropriety, or seeming impropriety in communications. But the thing is, with the Public Records Act, all we can do is get rid of records. However, with discovery, we cannot only get written records, but we can, uh, Edison has to provide summaries of the conversations that they had with the regional plan. And so, uh, and so all of this stuff will come out, and that was my discovery request. That should come back, and that discovery request went out last week or whatever it was, sometime Monday night on the board. So we should have that within a week and a half or so. But the, really great news on, on Thursday during the pre-hearing conference was that the judge 
the scope of this proceeding will be issued in the scoping memo, which we haven't seen yet. And that's written by the commissioner. However, commissioners' uh, scoping memos are typically very influenced by uh, the judge, judge's perception. And what the judge said was that they were inclined to agree with the Act of Town Council that all the issues related to reasonableness should be within the scope of the proceeding. So that's good news too. I think, I think, well, I've always believed that we have had, we have uh, not just the rules on our side, but also, you know, the rightness of the situation. So, um, so it's so far it's we're, we can get all the way. Edison's hitting us with every everything. So what's happening next? What's the next step? The next thing will be the pre-hearing conference. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, the but, but, yeah, scoping memo. But that usually comes out within a couple of weeks of the pre-hearing conference, which was on Thursday. Um, another thing is, I don't, okay, so after the next right? So the scoping memo comes out, then discovery back and forth. I don't know if they're going to issue us discovery, but they might. Um, and then testimony, the opening testimony will be due, the rebuttal testimony will be due. And then after that, potentially, if there's still factual matters that are in dispute, there will be evidentiary uh, hearings. And then after that, opening brief will be issued, let's see, we'll prepare opening brief, and then reply brief, and then we'll go to the commission for submission. And they'll make the decision. Or the judge will write a proposed decision, issue it, then we'll all comment on it, and then you know, the judge will come up with a final decision. That will go to the commission, and the commission will either adopt it or come up with their own alternative for the decision. So it's a long process. The thing that concerns me, and maybe we can talk about this because I didn't prepare it yet uh, on my, the next meeting, is that if it goes to evidentiary hearings, it will cost probably three or four bucks a page for the testimony, and there'll probably be several hundred pages of testimony. But the commission has a, a, a process if you apply for intermediate compensation, and it's, you, you're deemed to have, um, you, you qualify for it. What you get are all the transcripts for free. So I always apply for intermediate compensation, regardless of whether or not we actually ask for compensation, because it gets me the transcripts for free. And for on the tri tip proceeding, that was a three week event up in, up in the San Francisco. That was very expensive. All those transcripts were free, which was huge. Um, so, but to make that happen, we're going to have to sign some documents and I'll get that ready for the next week. So, Anyway, it's, cool. it's really, it's a, it's a process. Oh, he did ask us several questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is important. Um, and I was, I was glad I was able to ask this because he asked the town council, why do you have standing? You guys don't live up there. Right? Or we're not, well, I mean, we're not. It's not exactly. Yeah. So I explained to him that the town council bylaws were unincorporated with Denver City Council and that the residents from Bear Trap came to this meeting, including Mr. Ham, uh, and asked us to participate in their behalf because they, they know we participated in complaints, in investigations, and rulemaking proceedings, and for just regular proceedings, so four different types of proceedings. That's all the that, that things he asked. Uh, and so that seemed to satisfy him because it, yeah, apparently, I didn't know this, but Edison was even challenged our standard. I'm sure. I'm sure. It, felt, it, they feels, it feels like every. Chair, it's like they're just unloading everything. Oh, it's tacky it, three. Oh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, it's like because the, the response I, I fell out my chair on some of them, and they're just like, Oh, we just want to dismiss it on, on these. And it was like one thing after another, like every little nitpicky thing or things that were like made out of thin air, like because oh, because they breathe air, uh, they use electricity. We shouldn't let them, uh, they shouldn't. I think, I think they just they were gonna be scared. Well, I, I think that there's, there's, I, I think there's two prompts to be honest. I think that one, they, 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 they would be scared and fold. I also think that uh, they looked at it as a, a secondary, if, if, we, if they go unchallenged on uh, dealing with a general order, it gives them some kind of standing in the future to go like, well, we brought it up and the judge didn't say anything, so we're, we're, we're clearly 90% of our facilities are no. So it, it, in a way, it can further yeah. Thing. So that's why, I, if I'm them, I'm like, well, hey, let's roll the dice. If we had smacked on it, okay, well, then we work. But if we don't, yeah. now we just unlocked a new uh, huge, yeah, huge, 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 huge,
have this. I, so I, I don't know, that, that's what it felt like to me was we're gonna throw this stuff out, they're still hanging around, let's throw some really big, crazy asks and see if anything happens with it. Because it, it, it's either gonna, judge it, gonna hit us with it, if they're gonna hit us with it, they're gonna hit us with all things. Yeah. Or not, but. Well, they just, they just, they just act with impunity. I mean, all the time. And I guess what they don't understand is we got nothing to lose. Except for my thought. It seemed like an interesting question that the judge asked you. Why would we want to even get involved? Well, he didn't say it that way. Oh, what are you saying? Right? Yeah, yeah, it's like, so why is the town council, I mean, uh, it's what, so what, so what is our standing? Did yeah, yeah you know, I have we, we were, you know, invited by several of the residents up there yep. that they needed help, that they didn't know which direction to go. Yep, so and that's not just, right, to represent, right? Yeah, it wasn't yes. just Ted Ham, it was others. And that, and that is Acton. I mean, Bear Trap is Acton, so right. there wouldn't be a question. No, that's fair. And he actually came <coughs> right there. Yeah. 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 What can be done? What can be done? Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, it's just a class. The uh, next thing before you hit conscious change, you can see the draft is going to go update. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I asked. You're having a conversation. That's okay. It's okay. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> he's so getting, he's getting upset. So to explain the conversation, Troy was asking what bear trap was, which is pertinent to what we're just talking about. Okay. Well, they can't well, because it's bear annoying. On their map, yeah, they call it Elisa. Just kidding. I know you told me that. So <laughs> yeah. The sign says Bear Trap, LA County. And it, I've never heard of the street that Jack was talking about. I've been a realtor for 30 years, but I don't know what it was. So, I don't ask these questions a lot. Like I said, my head doesn't work here. I don't know. That's what <laughs> The rumor is that that was the last California grizzly that was trapped. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not grizzly. It's, it's, it's from up there. There's a whole thing oh. from the Santa Clara Historic Society trying to it. Its name is Monarch, and, and they took it up. That's the, uh, it was supposed to be a monster, too. Like, uh, sent, like, uh, Hearst sent one of his reporters down to help capture it. Like, was, that they heard was like the last thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it was kind of epic. Oh, no, it, 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 the story is amazing. Cool. The, the, the Santa Clara Historic Society has a whole thing on it. Yeah. 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 The Planning Commission adopted and approved, approved or recommended to the Board of Supervisors. It went to two different state agencies for review, per some state work laws that just got passed. And my hope had been to try, since all, since every comment we submitted on this, this element, and we submitted many comments very early on, New Orleans Board, um, I thought it would be a good idea to try to get present the comments, put them before the state agency so they can factor into their review. So that's why I asked But I got an email from Iris Chief saying, oh, they finished their review <laughs> last week. <laughs> and it, it's now before the board. Of course the board, they did. But the hearing has been, well, <laughs> do we want to send it to the board? <clears throat> uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we can just pin it to yeah, it was. Because there's a lot to be said to the board. We've said a lot. It's <clears throat> all been completely ignored. Some of, some of the issues, um, some of the issues of concern are um, that we, in our letters we raise CEQA issues. So the, the, the negative declaration that they, of, which is the CEQA document that they prepared for this, addresses the ordinance and the general plan amendment. And they are recommending that the board certify this negative. Yeah, the problem is nobody's ever seen the ordinance. It doesn't exist yet. So you can't certify an environmental document for an ordinance that nobody's ever seen before. They'll do this. They'll say, here, hold my beard. <laughs> I don't know. your nose. It. So it also, <clears throat> this um, general plan amendment includes a new policy. A lot of the policies are good. They're not bad. But this one policy will prohibit all subdivisions because it requires uh, all subdivisions in very high fire hazard areas to, it prohibits them unless they are connected to 
public infrastructure. Oh, they said define the public infrastructure. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, we, I no, said, we asked. No, no, we asked. I said, I said, look, you know, we have county water here. We yeah. have all this stuff, but we don't have a sewer system. Are you saying that because, because we don't have a sewer system, subdivision projects can't be approved and enacted? And the email came back, that's exactly right. So, of course, there's no nexus between having a sewer system and being well, fired. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, that's, that's, of course, a big thing. So, um, and it also says that the, the property must be completely surrounded by built developers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can look at that. I, I remember that. And, yeah. and it's like, well, what, what does that mean to me? Yeah, how do you get there if you can't build? Yeah, and it's like, but it's also, the, the, the intent was, I'm assuming, to stop development in the, in, 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 in nature, right? In, yes. yes, exactly. Except for, when you say it that way, a, a 10 acre parcel of land that's in the middle of the town, right, it has county water, and sewer. Um, if it, the lot next to it is vacant, does that mean it can't subdivide, even though it's, but, but completely, like, it, it's immediately adjacent, I mean, it's, it's crazy. But, but even going back to, Sewer thing. The only reason that we knew the sewers because we asked, but there's nothing in the document saying like these are the services that are required. No. It, so that, that that's the part that I have a problem with is if they just said that, you could then make the argument like, well, hey, these ones, these three are okay. This one's silly. Uh, can you explain how you got that they need sewer? Like we just said, like, right. but it's not even in the document. So it's it's literally up to interpretation of whoever you get a hold of on the phone that day. This gets into all the other stuff. It's or like, that year. That we're covering. Yeah. And and and. and and so here's here's a big problem is that um, and this happened in the issue there was all these vague you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, in interim and supportive housing ordinance issue there was all these vague words right and so I was participating in the planning commission meeting and uh, 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 Mr. Pat Chia was another planner said well here, here's the map of where all these things are going to go now I'm like whoa you have a map. Yeah. Like they had had maps before, but they were really, yeah. they were not clear, yeah. right? And so, uh, and so, yeah, we just put this platform out, and so suddenly you can see where all the stuff is going. Things are going, and it was like you know, fourteen thousand in District Five and one, three, two, three. <laughs> I'm not kidding, in District no. Five. And so, um, so they have the ability to, 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 to provide to this. say, okay, this is where we're talking about. We say no new. Development in, you know, in the wilderness. Do you mean Acton? I mean, Acton's been around a lot longer than most cities down the hill. So we exist. <laughs> they were wilderness, I mean, but they were still sale, right? So um, it's vague and it's not clear. And another problem is that our AB area plan and the county general plan say that. Development, they make a distinction between sprawl and rural, which is we fought hard for that, right? right. Sprawl is where you have public infrastructure yeah. and subdivisions and residential rural. Rural is where you have you light on the land, you don't have this infrastructure. So by putting that requirement in and requiring subdivisions to have public utility, or I'm sorry, yeah, infrastructure, it's called public infrastructure, they're completely contravening and subverting all the other elements in the general plan, right? Because they're forcing you to have, they're forcing you to create a yeah. which is, it's supposed to be discouraged in our area. So, 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 I'm just, so therefore you can't do anything. Well, and you can't put it in a sprawl because it's forbidden. Mission well, accomplished. No, no, but see that's not how it works. The state general encourages statute sprawl. says you can't Say no. No, no. It says you can't have an element that's completely no. contradicted by another element. But they never even looked at this issue. So what bothers me is that this thing, you know, we've never been opposed to subdivision. It just has to be low density and work, right? That's what happened. That's what the community. Um, this thing will prohibit all subdivision in virtually every rural community in a high fire area. Which is all the rock communities. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Little Rock is. I'm not Little Rock. I mean, Anlo Bakers, they're not. Shh. Sure. 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 Yeah. 
No, it's, it's really only the mountain. They're, they're actually they're really low low risk because they just have you know a Joshua tree. Well, no, they're they're known as the solar farms. Yeah, they used to have Joshua trees. <laughs> yeah, they used to. Anyway, so, so it's, it's okay to think about if you're building a solar farm, but not if yeah. you're oh, trying right. to live. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Oh, unless you don't live in an RV, it's probably. Then then it's encouraged, and you can put more RVs. So it is going to go before the board. There are a lot of problems with this. Did did. Were you able to talk Chuck to Supervisor Barger to see if she's looked at this? I was trying to go through my mind because I remember bringing this up downtown the last time you guys had discussed it and the idea of, you know, yes, it prohibits splitting a 10-acre parcel into four two and a half acre parcels. Um, and I cannot remember, I know I raised it downtown and I, with an inch, okay. and I cannot remember what happened other than you say, oh, let me, let me see what's going on on this. Because I said, you know, you guys realize this really does stop you from splitting the 10-acre parcel or two. Or anything. Yeah. 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 So, um, Meaning, I mean, you know, it's just, it, it stops parcel maps too. It's, it's, it's just small scale. Yeah, it's all subdivisions. Um, at the Planning Commission hearing, they did address two issues that were raised. One of them was the issue that Pam raised would be in, in testimony, which there's a big part of this safety element is driven by what's called the Climate Vulnerability Assessment, the CPA, that was done by the Sustainability Office. <clears throat> and the policies that it adopts are like, you know, we have to make communities more resilient, and the way we're going to do that is the CBOs are going to do Community based organizations, that's us, that's Action Town Council, Women's Club, Community Club. So, so Pam made this statement, it's like, this puts all of the responsibility for doing this on the CBOs. Doing things like um, uh, fire uh, evacuation uh, program, uh, there's a, yeah, there's a, I can't remember exactly words, but all of that is supposed to be developed by the CBOs. But we don't have the expertise, we don't have the authority for one thing, and we don't, it's sort of the whole thing is ridiculous. And so Pam asked that question, it's like, you're putting, the obligations for this implementation on back town council's back, on the women's club's back. How exactly do you do that? That's your implementation plan, is have us implement that. And so, and you go, know, Dan, and you guys, I just to encourage you to watch the hearings on December 13th. She said, well, this comes, the, the, the new, Mr. Madunio is gone. There's a new planner for District 5. I don't remember his name, he seems like a very sharp man. But he asked about the plan's comment. And uh, Ms. Bodek, who's the director of regional planning, sort of answered it. Well, this goes back to you know, some of the statutes where you know, we have to get look at resiliency and blah. And then she started like what John calls watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. Does that answer your question? Oh, uh, okay. So it was not, I don't know how we're I don't know how we're going to do it, so that's another problem. But then the second thing that she what I commented on was this prohibition on subdivisions. And she told the Planning Commission that what I said was incorrect, that this does nothing. All tentative maps that have been approved will still go forward. So I was wrong. And I was like, I, tentative <laughs> maps are maps that are already in the process. Yeah. This prohibits new you, subdivisions. Yeah. She completely ignored that. She didn't. And the planning commission's like, oh, okay, thank you. That was really good clarification. <laughs> and then, and, and I did also raise the CEQA issue about the ordinance. It, you're approving a CEQA document for an ordinance and a plan, but we only see the plan. I mean, we, you can't certify a document. We haven't seen that. And she, uh, uh, um, I think it was Commissioner, I don't remember which commissioner, asked about that. Because I think that was surprising to them, right? Because it is a surprising thing. You don't do stuff like that. And she, Ms. Bodek said um, that the ordinance is in process. It's one that you've already, we've already talked about before. And so the commissioner said, so we've already seen it before. And she, Ms. Bodek said, yes. Oh, OK, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm like, that was easy. we haven't seen it before. We've never seen it. It's she, like, she, she Jedi mind trip them. This is the ordinance you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I've seen this one before. <laughs> Mm. All of these concerns. So all the other <laughs> answers were really important. And I just 
some well, and unfortunately, we got a new commissioner for <laughs> he tried. He tried. He was paying attention, but I think it was his uh, first or second. This poor town. Yeah. And I think you're right. She has it. Yeah. It's yeah. a yeah. mistake. So, so this is your unfortunately, this whole thing is going to land on the board. Yeah. Yeah. So, once again, it's... So I guess we're saying we're going to send on yeah. to the board. Send on. Yeah. Let me take a moment. Oh, one other thing that it has. It implements, it, it, the safety element adopts the sustainability. No! Now, the sustainability plan has never gone through environmental review. No. And because the, it was the environmental yeah. document does the safety element update. Is oh, a, a, a neg deck that consists of one page in the initial study. You go through that initial study, it doesn't even mention the sustainability plan. Nothing. So, so now, once it's part of the general plan, the sustainability plan is, is yeah, binding, and enforceable, yeah. and must go forward. The county has to meet that 80% goal for local water, the huge diversion goals for waste. Every, it's, I don't know if you look at sustainability, no, it's it is huge. Yeah. And now it's just going to go through without environment, any environmental review because... Well, they'll fix the housing prices because everybody's going to move. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be plenty of houses in there. Anyway, yeah, sorry. Right, so we need to, I guess so we should write a letter to the board. So they do have a plan. Chuck, do you have any advice? Do you? Write a letter to the, to the board, yeah. yeah. I was just talking <laughs> <just, laughs> about my I, I don't really know. Like, Answer to the question because I, I, you, I asked Dan Tan about the issue of hey, does this mean no parcel maps? You know, is, is that, and, uh, and then you guys, Dan, it's okay. Like that, it's okay. And, and you said the, you finally got regional planning's explanation that says yes, this means no parcel maps. And so I sent that down. So I can't see that I got an answer of any sort. So I don't know. I think it's really important for us to understand <laughs> what we can do. And what the most effective way is for us to get the message to them. And, and you know what? So, and I'd say email the supervisor on her Catherine's email. Do you guys use send to that? When, it's a, when, when we do it this way, yes. Okay, yeah. because I don't know how much of that stuff she reads. I know she does read it sometimes because we'll get a message at 4 o'clock in the morning because she got a <laughs> early and she's just looking at emails and she's yeah. going, What's with this guy? How come nobody answers this guy? What's happening here? And so I know she's looking at some of them. Yeah. So I used to work for a CEO that we had a... a, a not withstand judicial review. Because it's, it's taking away people's property by government. Well, there's like 15 ways it's not going to... So when I was thinking about that thing too, I'm thinking, I don't know if you can tell if she or Q who's going to be out there soon. Um, and and hand and everybody say, oh, well, the, this is going to stand important. You're making people's property worthless here. I think you're going to have to do that a lot of times. Well, it, it is there, there is an inverse condemnation or uh, claim to be made because there's no nexus between sewer systems and fire risk. So you're taking away the fire. Well, you, you showed real life examples like this. You said, you know, a house that's uh, okay. some Crown Valley Road. Oh, yeah, let's take let's take I know exactly. There's a 10 acre parcel yeah. and it's an otter who owns it. But they're in the district 37. Yeah. They're they're accessible. They have six different ways to get out. Yeah. North, south, east, west, yeah. every point of the compass. So there's the only thing. Huh? Oh well. Okay. There's different. Actually, six it's, 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 different roads that can go out to every point of the compass. Sorry. 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 I, I, I wish they stayed out there. But in my <laughs> compass, I have a million points. To anyway. Uh, so the, the last thing on here is a rural internet draft requires communication. So. I sat in on the uh, the Acton Ogbenosi Democrat Club uh, <laughs> call and uh, about rural internet, and so I was kind of surprised because I know I, I know Supervisor Barton. We had our conversation with her last year. She said there were some things we never heard anything from. It sounds like Robert Alvarez is the 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 guy to talk to. I would love to check if we could try to. Uh, I don't. I didn't get his contact info, but if I get his contact or put me in contact with him, I would love that and come talk. I was not encouraged by the, the conversation because it sounds like we all make too much money in acting, 
uh, that, um, so because it's because so and there's we've got this digital to the body thing that some of the other supervisors are crazed about. Yes. And but we don't know how that's going to work. Do we create a Los Angeles County Department of Internet? Okay. So so that's the other concern uh, I had. Which so I was going to start out with. First, it was bad because we're like. Yeah, like your median income is above the level they're looking at, and then they like drew a big circle around like downtown and all these other areas. And we're like, these people are underserved. And I'm like, but they, they we're really underserved. We got nothing. They don't, they don't have, they don't have service because they're not paying. Correct. So that's, that's a different problem. Yeah, yeah, a different yeah. problem. Here, here, here we have infrastructure, yes. which is actually what would be useful to, to have such. So, oh yeah, yes, really, yes. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Really, they're so, looking at the amount of connections, not the amount of infrastructure. Yes. The amount of infrastructure under the doesn't exist. Well, that could be supported, just the amount that are supported. Are supported. How yep. many families, how many households have got high speed internet in the So it sounds like the proposal is going to be basically what Chuck just said, which is create a municipality that and, doesn't and So that, that, I don't think about speaking out of school by saying that that scares our office. Uh, it, it scares the you you out me. Because, yes, because basically, why do I want this? Is, okay, I'm going to put my typical hat on for a minute. I don't know that I want government control on public utilities, on internet, free communication. When there's already companies that do that, yes, and how does that work? And that competition is yeah, bad. What do we do again? Well, there yeah. isn't so infrastructure. Yeah. Can we put it in? Uh, yeah. Five so, billion dollars. I'm not yeah. smart. Yes. Yeah. So, so the next piece that that's concerning is it. It sounds like there's. Well, I'll, I'll use the words of somebody that was from the, the, the club was like, there's so much money. There's just so much money. Like, there's just money floating around. It's like, no, nah, not really. Uh, and so it seems like uh, part of the problem, too, is that it is broken up into blocks by census. And so there's no, the stuff that's earmarked for rural, we don't qualify for because the census block. <laughs> We're in LA County. What, what, what world and planet is LA considering? <laughs> it's, it's always been that way for federal yeah. Uh, yeah. assistance yes. on internet. It, yeah. so, it doesn't matter if you have it or not, it matters what your zip code is. Correct. Yes. And so the problem is that when you break up any of the sense of we, we get lumped in with it. And so then it gets even worse. So I'll give you the, the final worst cut to this where I was like completely deflated. It was like the balloon of my internet dreams was like floating around the room and this just went which was uh, essentially that you are considered served if anything in your census block has it. So, give you a case in point. Uh, Spectrum does serve a lot of, we are considered served by, by broadband. So you don't look at it like Shannon Valley has no broadband, and you know, Aliso has no broadband, and they look at it like, oh, Acton and Autobusy do have access to high speed. So those are the, <coughs> the things that they're going to fix. I know there's a consultant, and I you know yeah. what I mean. I think it's a good point, because yeah. new services are rolling in that are going to serve us, probably this year. And by the time the county does anything yeah. to solve this problem, yeah. we're going to have Starling. Yeah. Yeah. Starling. Yeah. Starling. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. yeah. Most of us can't afford it. So <laughs> I mean, it's about accessibility. I mean, yeah, I think that the one thing that there, there, there is, is uh, <laughs> They're going to the consult my six months. Robert's working with them. I have any other answers. But the, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that might be. Yeah. It sounded like there was some hope. But yeah. the thing that gets depressing about it is it feels like there's a bunch of money being sucked up by these consultants that have gone to partner with all these communities to try to get things. I'm so, so sick of grants. Yes. Wait, so, like, grants are just the way the government like doesn't do its job. It lets other people pay people to not do their job. Basically, I mean, I'll give you this. Here's what else is, but like, that's the, 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 the periodic table of federal broadband funding opportunities. And it's like literally like a giant chart of like all these little buckets. But again, the problem is, is like, you know, we fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you want to talk about equity and, and, and disenfranchisement? Like we landed the gap. Uh, so if they if they come the to, if they come to the town council, you should really let the school district. Not that they'll so come they, because they we never know what's going to happen. No, but that but that's a huge issue. We've got so many kids on distance well, learning, and it's going to continue because parents are you know some yeah. parents don't ever want to send their kids back. This is a huge issue. They need to be here with people yes. from the district if they'll show which, up. Which is what I want to get <clears throat> here, because my, my, my other 
end goal and thought was, okay, if we're going to allocate a bunch of the federal funds down to these areas, yeah. what can we free up from the, the, the county's funds to yes. meet us on the southern part? Let's put a show there. So fair. we're going to take the federal funds and put it there? Great. What can we do to bring it here? Because I don't think the problem, and I think this is the, the, the lens that's too macro looking at what the problems are. The problems are not that there is no access. It's getting the feeder stuff. Like, for instance, just because I can, I can speak to this because I had this conversation to talk to the construction department inspector for a year trying to get internet in the Shannon Valley. The, the barrier to get internet to Shannon Valley was not astronomical. It's just I don't have $60,000 I just want to write a check to give all my neighbors internet. Right. So it's not billions of dollars, it's not millions of dollars. If the infrastructure is in place, it just stops short. So we're not talking about building out whole new infrastructure supply supply areas. You're going from zero internet speed to even if it was 25, which is the federal level for what's considered broadband, which is a joke, but it, it's yeah. still zero to 25, that's a well, okay, so If you have you know, actual data along those lines, I'm sure that's something that Robert would appreciate because because I've been trying to tell this um, yeah. a man, man that I said, you know, the issue in the world of Peterson and Mello is often that, well, there is a cable down there on the main yes. road, and, but somebody's a quarter mile, got a quarter mile. Yes. And, 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 yeah, and that's that's what we're talking about. So when I, when I just to give you the case of point, so when I talked to Spectrum, this is three, four years ago, um, the, the company I worked for, we were a very large Spectrum account. So I tried to leverage, like, oh, hey, this isn't my company asking, but we're a really big account, and I'm asking these we have a relationship. So they said, hey, here's who to talk to, so the head of construction. It's great. I start talking to them and say, okay, if, I said, how many people do I need, or what would cost me an internet pass? It was like, to your house, it would be, you know, 30 grand for us to run a cable in. Well, that's insane. So, no. so I said, what if I got, how many neighbors would I have to get to get that number down or to zero? They said, well, if you get us 20 people, we'll bring it in. Done. I'll get it tomorrow. So I, I literally went back to door to door, got 25 people. I said, here, 25 people, sign up for TV and internet, you're good. Great, we'll get started. A couple weeks later, I come back, and we actually pulled the numbers to be more. Like, well, how much more? And that's where, like, oh, so it's actually about the, you know, 30 or 40 grand, which we actually didn't look at how long the run the you know, So then it was like, okay, even if I got every person in Chan Valley, you it's not enough. So but my point is, is like, we're talking about $50,000. We're not talking about a million dollars to get that. Now, do, you have ever, uh, do you have any knowledge of ever seen a map showing where a spectrum Exist. So, so I think I may even have one because I think I went through this whole process with them. Like, where does your T mark end right now? And then how far do we need to go beyond yes. it? We had this conversation with um, Spectrum. I don't even know what prompted it. I think they reached out. I said this was a couple of years ago, a year ago, and they said, and we wanted them to say, show us, yeah, just show us where you can't show us. Yeah, what we're talking about it. Who's not too far away? And they wouldn't do that. And they so, said, no, no, if you talk to people who don't have any of that, tell us about it and see what we can do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, 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 so maybe, 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 they, it's, it's, they maybe want, well, maybe if I can get together with Robert, I, maybe I can help close the gap because maybe we're talking to the wrong well, person. Well, and that's good because whenever it comes up in our office, and, and I'm always saying, you know, the issue in, in the yeah. Royal yeah. Valley areas like Juniper Hills and Acton and Lake Hughes is not that. Yeah. Yeah. You have, a, you have what we call the you know, presence, but yeah. you don't have the coverage. And the coverage number is probably significantly lower because it's it, it, the problem is is if I'm if I'm Spectrum, I don't want to go if I if I spend you know, so I'm sure that number is like the number the reduced number based upon what they're guessing. But they don't want to do the investment I'm sure. On the other hand, you kind of monopoly because you ATT is not bringing fiber in and, and ATT is not going to do anything else. So you they would have lock, stock, and barrel, even if it's terrible, which is why I think it's like lock, stock, and barrel. that's why important, because county rent has these franchise areas. Yes. Yeah, so, and, so I don't know, we, we must have some place in the county somewhere, some map showing where those cables run. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. like I said, that were, uh, getting in touch with the construction part, because to me, the main thing was like, it, the gap was not, we can't do it, we won't do it. It was, we need this amount of money, which is like, you know, it, like, I'm not, no, I'm not gonna go, if I go around, random me, to people in my neighborhood and say like, hey, can you each give me like 1,200 bucks and we'll get internet? I'm gonna laugh off and probably shot at it. Right. 
But if the, if the county has you know, funds available to be freed up because, hey, we're using this, this federal money for this, if they can bridge that gap, hey, now we're covered, now we're dealing with the, the education issue, which was brought up. It was brought up like, hey, we're, we're like severely in a, in a you know, deficient spot because it's not even like the hotspot thing works. That was another thing. Like, well, they give out hotspots. It's like, yeah, they, what happens if you don't have the ability to get you know, internet signal? You know, okay, so this all dovetails into the wireless communication ordinance, which we need to pull apart. And so I started to look at it. Yeah, there's just some that I really don't like. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to go through like the fine tooth comb, but what do comments do? That's what I don't. Know. I think oh. we have a little bit of more time, but uh, we got another email on it today, and I haven't looked at it. So hot spots don't always work. So things like. Uh, Things I like, there was a wireless facility that should be located to minimize visual impacts on adjacent residences and historic resources. So like, that's good for this to Things are concerning that were like, uh, for our uh, facility subject to subsection C2 above, the Commission of Hearing may grant a waiver to one or more development standards in this section if the Commission of Hearing Officer concerns the applicant has established a denial uh, of an application would prohibit effectively or effectively prohibit the provision of personal wireless services. It sounds like if, so if they just say it, yes. then they get whatever they want. Yes. And that's what they'll do. That's a problem. And then uh, prohibit effectively uh, or uh, otherwise violate applicable Sorry. laws and regulations, require technically and feasible design and installation of wireless relay, which is baloney because that's like, I did just march something who's like, oh, we can't do that in that box. Oh, why? We can't. It's okay, feasible. they can't. The, the expert says we can't. We can't. Subject matter. Uh, yes, which is terrible. So uh, when determination is made, a grant waiver, one or more of uh, the applicable design and location standards only the minimum extent that were uh, required to avoid the prohibition violation of technically feasible design. Yeah, because they're going to say we need to be 400 feet. Yes, which is exactly, like, which, which when you go back to like even the thing, like, I, I'll speak to you as my neighbor, the, 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 the Tower of Shang Valley, where it was like, it's going to be in the middle of the valley, the bottom of the valley, not the top, and it's going to be a 80 foot tower over this. It was like, that there's no other 80 foot object in, 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 within miles. I mean, not even just like, I mean, there's nothing, and there were going to go a mile. Yeah, well, oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's so, so, you know, so, anyway, so I, I don't know as well, but those are the things like initially I was like, whoa, wait, wait, it sounds like they march an SME into the room. Yeah. They say whatever. Yeah. 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 So, okay. no, but like I said, there were some things I was like, I appreciate the things like, you know, minimize visual impacts on the JC Ridley, but even that's pretty broad. They did, I was concerned when I first heard it too, because there was some stuff about, um, Design that they did include. It sounded initially like they would only allow certain designs, but they they called out like water tower. They, they called out more things than what? Because my fear was like we're going to do trees. Yeah. Like everything's a tree. Yeah. It's like but there's no double around there. But don't they look nice? Well, like, then, then we'll do these guys. There's some other stuff that took me some deep diving on, which are like height size of small cell facilities. So then they start breaking down the types of facilities. Shall not exceed the dimensions specified as a small cell. So th there's some stuff that are called back that they don't include it. So I oh. have to look at oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's things, across. all sorts of stuff in here. But a lot of that. How long is That's why I was like, I started killing you, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I do think when you look at when, when it's due, I, I would probably at least. We, the way we, uh, let me agree to make a comment out of it. Yeah. You, you'll have to like Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I know nothing. Let me nothing. see if I can find the Yeah, the other interesting thing about the AB rule broadband was that meeting was on. I don't remember what day it was. It was last week. I think it was the 22nd. Yeah, and the comments were due the 23rd. Oh, jeez. Uh, so I, I, filled, I filled it out, but like it was basically like. Yeah, that was, it, it, that was just when the club had the meeting uh, that had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, the, the, thing, the thing didn't see that though. That was, it was the uh, AV Rural Broadband Survey. It was an RFP should include. Uh, anyway. Oh, well, that was an example of the club came up with that. <coughs> no, no, no. No, th I think this was. I thought this was from the county. No, I don't think so. It says we need to develop 
single question survey uh, for public comments to the LA County Internal Services Department regarding the implementation of the proposed community wireless network pilot. The department is looking to obtain input on the community-based or community-based organizations to inform the ISD of issues that need to be in the RFP. Wait, this is so a county pilot using federal funds, that's why we don't get it. Well, I think this is the well, So I haven't heard anything about the state survey. I'll forward it to you, Chuck. Okay. Because my concern was this, so we had, they had uh, Shane England and, and uh, Mr. Alvarez come talk, and it was like, hey, I that stuff. Then we get like a thing at the end, it's like, oh yeah, there's a survey to fill out, and it's like due like tomorrow for AV, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, aren't we part of that? Why did no one, and, and, and basically. It's that, not a known for the county not to tell anybody they're having a survey. I mean, that kind of stuff has happened before. Yeah. I have not heard of this, and I was talking to Robert all the time about this meeting, so. Yeah. I guess we're to Why don't we ask the little rock and let you let it? Well, that, well, that's what I'm that, that, that My concern is that this AV, you know, community wires thing was sent to everybody in Palmdale Lancaster and the stakeholders out there, and we were forgotten. And, and so, I have concerns. It's, it's all possible, but. Well, um, I'll tell you what, if it is for county input, the county has the ability to open it back up for sure. three weeks. So, so. Or extend yeah, it. Yeah. Well, and, and I put in my, my comments, I just said I, I would have liked to have somebody come to talk to the town council about it so we had a chance to get input prior to like just like because well so this, this was this was from the this was all a request by the Democratic Party. No 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 this is this was something that they that was separate from that. They, oh. they just sent it out after like hey uh because it came up in the conversation with with Robert and uh Did you say that the broadband survey is what it's called? Um uh, AD World Broadband Survey and it was done by that from the ISD. LA County Internal Service Department. But the thing that I have a bigger problem with isn't even the survey came out. It was like a foregone thing, like, hey, we want to do a community uh, wireless pilot. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, like. How do we get on that track? Yeah, it was like, how do we, we, do we, we didn't have the conversation about what to do. We just jumped to like, this is what we're going to pilot. Or if we did, we were not informed, and I thought we were the AD, so now I'm even more confused. Um. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I was the. Uh, I think we have, oh, we have, uh, the commission assembly here is March, late March 2022. So we have some time. So I, I'll put it on the thing so we can okay. formulate it. Okay. And I'll have time to go through it. Okay. Find you the so late March or something? Yes. So, anyhow, I, I, I was excited because I thought, oh, cool, like maybe, like, we finally, yeah. the funds are there. <laughs> yeah. and, like, this is going to be great. I can't wait. Like, we have internet. And it's like, it's just I'm just kidding. Uh, was it Lucy in the football? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. The other dilemma is you're going to have you're going to need more substantial funds than somewhere like Santa Clarita because the vast majority of infrastructure when it comes to actual optic lines well, doesn't exist. You have to do underground trenching for everything. There, there's several there's several issues, but even even without that, so the difference between here and Santa Clarita is for the the backbone carrier though part of it. They don't need to be a significant sample because the population density is so low. Even if everybody on their brother was downloading all the things, you don't need a, you know, a OC, you know, 148 carrier connection coming in. It, it, it's significantly diminished. The main thing is, is getting transmission from these hubs. So, like, case in point, uh, like T-Mobile's uh, has 5G out here and in the spots that they're covered, mm -hmm. and it's all their uh, their uh, low band, which is like. Great, it's really fast, you can get you know, great signal. They've already brought in the, the backbone for that. All of Spectrum's service points are already fiber. They might have to do some upgrades, but it, the, the basic infrastructure is there. So even when those conversations with them about that, for the most part, maybe we get to some further reaches in, in, in Acton, in some of these weird world pockets. But generally speaking, it's, they, they have presence up to a certain point. Well, see, that's the problem. They, if they have the presence, but the problem is when you actually field the poles and look at whether they can even sustain the equipment to run something like down Shannon Valley, half of those poles are going to fail, so then you have to run under. Well, they should now. They replaced all of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I did the engineering for it for two years. Yeah. They can replace the poles. Half the equipment on there is not. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, it's so bad. Yeah. My, my point is, like, even... Yeah. Doing the deep dive before, just for Shannon Valley, that was approximately the cost. I'm sure things have changed. Yeah. It's the, 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 the point <laughs> is, is that they want to bring it to these areas, and they know these 
they know that they have these challenges. Yes. Okay. So to say it's challenging because you've got to run underground wire, it's challenging yeah. because you've got to put up a new pole. That's what the whole that's what the whole program yes. is designed to, yes. to do. Yes, solve. Is is to solve the challenges because if we didn't have these challenges, we'd all have high speed internet. Yes. 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 So it, it, I'm not buying that promise. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I'm just saying substantially you're going to need about five times as much funding sure. to do underground versus above ground. Sure, but, but regardless, you're talking about a much uh, more streamlined uh, proposition. One, they already have presence here. It's not, I can understand if Acton had zero internet anywhere. We're just like, oh, we're, we're literally in a black hole. But you can get high-speed internet if you just live along a certain corridor where they've already brought mm -hmm. in fiber. All we're talking about is building up the capacity. But even aside from that, the, the, the goal with this is to bridge those gaps that like, if I was the city of Santa Clarita and we put it in development and we bolted it on the side of whatever <coughs> we carved out, whatever open space we said we were going to carve out and we carved it up anyway. Um, and we did that, uh, they, you know, they put in you know, 1,000 homes, 2,000 homes, whatever. If I'm Spectrum, I go, oh cool, like 2,000 customers. Ching, here it's like, you want us to run how much cable for how many people? Yeah, that's like not feasible. So the point of this is like, if we remove that spectrum, would you service it? Like, if we remove the cost barrier for just getting it wired, yeah, we'd service it. Cool. That's all we're looking for is like, if it wasn't even spectrum, say AT and T, AT and T, we'll run fiber from one of your your point of presences to you know down all these homes, whatever, whatever. I don't care who it is, but the point is to, to remove that barrier so that it's not the stopping point. Because if you call spectrum right now, like I said, I I call them I was like, what is the cost to put a cable for, to my house? All freaking whatever. You know, and they said, how many zeros were after it? And I was like, do I really need internet? It's kind of nice being at home without internet. Uh, so it, that, that to me is the, the thing. And if, if, if the federal funds aren't available for our particular proclivity, there has to be some funds in, in the county for something for, for this, you know, these equity yeah, issues. What do you want? Yes, yes. Offset. yes, and offset it and just play the show game, move it over here. Even if it we didn't get all of that then, like anything is going to be moving the ball forward. So my thing is just like, can we get anything to move forward rather than everybody sitting around going like, oh, we can't do it, oh, it can't be done. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? And I'm not earmarking my neighbor. I'm saying literally look at the map and figure out where we have the biggest impact. We have, they give us, they said, we have $2 million in trip. Great. Where can we cover the most amount of people spectrum for $2 million? What, what would give us the most coverage? Because they, they have best interest too in covering the most amount of people because they're going to get the most return yes, on that. They're going to take all the money and get private dividends. Yeah, yes. whatever. I, you lose. Just like yeah. everybody else yeah. does. <laughs> but at least there's a public benefit out of it. Right. At least, I mean, that's, that is my, my main point of attention. At least they're the kids that are, you know, you know, little freaking COVID restrictions or we have snow day, I mean, we can erase some of that despair. Yeah. Yeah. That, that to me is yeah. worth the way and I think increasingly it's going to affect property values long term because yeah. you can't tell somebody nowadays, yeah. move this area, especially in, in the era of remote work, and then be like, but the internet's kind of fun. And they're like, mm -hmm. I mean, I know I was in a deal home, break. but I had a cable blog, and I know that when I moved here, it was like, what do you guys read for internet? They're like, like, no, they were like, not even that. They were like, there's a guy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, there's a guy, and he's got a thing, and you're like, hey, yeah, and like, it's kind of slow. It's like, yeah, this is really weird. So, uh, yeah. so we need to move from there, there's a place yeah. after there's a guy to like. Yeah. So anyway, I, those are my high level resources. Because Jackie Owen said something about Mike Garcia had presented this to us. Yeah, well, there's been a couple know. points. So the the fund got approved in the infrastructure. So like, there, there's. The funds made it, but the problem is, is the carve outs for the funds we don't match it. It's like if we were really, really poor, we'd yeah. get it. If we were inner city, we'd get it. If we weren't in LA County, like if like literally like they stuck us in Inyo or Kern or something, we we might because it'd be like, well, there's you know, capital. So we where we sit, we're like screwed because we're too big of a county, and we're screwed because we have a provider that serves it, and apparently we're rich. So. Uh, it, it was it, it literally is one of the criteria is median income that they were using, and we're like I don't know what they said our median was, but whatever it was, we were like ten or twenty grand over what. Like, and it wasn't. It didn't even appear that it was like oh, the median income in Acton is one hundred and thirty grand. It was like fifty nine thousand dollars. Yeah, I saw ninety five thousand. 
Well, I, I, well, the, one, the numbers they showed though was much lower, and they still were over. That's why it was like it was. I want to say it was like fifty nine or sixty thousand or something like that a year, and they were like, and you're still over. And I was like, what's the bar? Like, like do we all just quit our jobs for a year and get internet? I'm telling you, like, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I'm not that disturbed <coughs> because I know parts of Santa Maria have got Starbucks service now. Yeah, well, we, yeah. As soon as I guess we can get some computer chips made, yes. and Elon can get his little thing shipped out to everybody, we'll have that option. We'll uh, yeah, it'll be an option. It, it, and it, all those little expenses. That's expensive. up there. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's the low, the low orbit satellite. Yeah. You know, all those a little expensive. Um, it's there. It's there, yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Be better quality than coming, what you but, got. Yeah. By but a lot. At the end of the day, you know, having good wireline service is still tantamount to. But it's never going to happen. They're never going to run fiber off yeah. of a lease of in the service pipe. Right. Regardless of. You, but it's fair to do, 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 have, have you read the government? <laughs> the government, you just have to find the right person to convince that that's a great idea. Watch with, with other well, people. I remember, like, when they were trying to get that in Feinstein to help us on the high speed rail, she's like, <laughs> are there. Are there uh, Bighorn sheep in Acton? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know they're in the San Gabriel Mountains, but you don't have any in Acton? I'm like, well, I'm sure we do. You should have just said, hold on one second. Like, Can somebody bring me a bighorn? Get the trailers. Call Tippy. Why is he really friendly? Why is he coming in with that? I don't know. Some cotton ones, but I don't know the dog. She's always going to say, she really likes bighorn sheep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, just get a couple tons of like cotton balls, put it on a dog, cook a point. Yeah. <laughs> good to go. From a distance, she would. Yeah. Give her some wine. It, it, like, what the fuck? Yeah, we may have to spot them, but they are in the air. It's because they're super endangered. You, you, you really don't have to. Uh, you, you go out the 39 and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah